Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at two countries, analyzing their opportunity costs, and then deciding who has a comparative advantage in production. With that said, let's get into it. So in our example, we have two countries, Canada on the left and the United States on the right. And as you can see, we have linear production possibilities frontiers, and we have apples on the vertical axis, and we have oranges on the horizontal axis. We're going to use these two graphs to answer these eight questions, starting with the first one, which asks, what is the slope of Canada's production possibilities curve? So as you probably remember from grade nine math, slope is just equal to rise over run. And remember that the origin is gonna be zero, so the rise is the distance between zero and 500, and the run is simply the distance between zero and 250. So if I substitute those values into my equation, then slope is just equal to 500 over 250, and simplifying that, I get slope is equal to two. Now the slope of the production possibilities curve is a rate. In fact, the slope of any line is a rate, and the way that you would interpret this is that Canada can produce two apples per orange. Let's move on to the second question. Now this looks at the United States and asks for the slope of their production possibilities curve. Now we're gonna use the exact same formula, except it's gonna have different values. So we have rise over run, where the rise is 300 and the run is 900. So substituting those into my equation, I get slope is equal to 300 over 900, which reduces to the slope being one third. And once again, this can be interpreted that the United States can produce one third of an apple per orange. Question three asks, what is the opportunity cost of producing oranges in Canada? Now the opportunity cost is simply the amount you sacrifice over what you gain. So Canada would sacrifice 500 apples in order to gain 250 oranges. I can simplify this to be the opportunity cost equaling two, which you might notice is the same as the slope. Now this will always be true. The opportunity cost of the good on the x-axis will always be equal to the slope of the PBC. Again, I can interpret this as one orange costs two apples in terms of production. Let's take a look at the United States example. So similarly, you're probably looking at the answer to question two and saying, well, the opportunity cost must be one third and you'll be right, but let's explain it with the formula as well. So opportunity cost is still sacrifice over gain, but this time the United States are sacrificing 300 apples in order to gain 900 oranges. If I simplify this, of course I get one third and this can be interpreted as one orange costs one third of an apple. Again, the slope is the exact same as the opportunity cost as the good on the X axis. Now question four asks, what is the opportunity cost of producing apples in Canada? Now I'm gonna show you a shortcut that's gonna save you a load of time on a test or an assignment. If you look at the opportunity cost of one good, the other good's opportunity cost will always mathematically be the reciprocal. Now you might be saying, oh my goodness, I forget what the reciprocal is. No problem, let me show you. So if the opportunity cost of oranges is equal to two, if I wanna write that as a fraction, it's gonna be two over one. Now the reciprocal is me just flipping that fraction so that the denominator and numerator switch spots. So if the opportunity cost of oranges is two over one, then the opportunity cost of apples is just one over two. And that's that, the opportunity cost is one over two and that means that one apple costs half an orange. Easy peasy. Let's move on to question number six, which asks for the opportunity cost of producing apples in the United States. And again, you can just look at the opportunity cost of producing oranges and see that it's one over three. So if the opportunity cost of producing oranges is one over three, and I want to flip that to get the reciprocal, that's gonna give me three over one for apples, which can just be reduced to three. And so I can interpret this as one apple costs three oranges. Again, this will save you a lot of time because you don't have to recalculate sacrifice over gain. All you need to do is flip the fraction. Now I'm gonna show the final two questions together because it simply asks for the comparative advantage that Canada has and the comparative advantage that the United States have. Now recall that the comparative advantage is decided by who has the lower opportunity cost. So for Canada, we're gonna look at apples right here. And we'll see that Canada has an opportunity cost of one half and the United States have an opportunity cost of three. Now, obviously one half is less than three, and therefore we would say that Canada has a comparative advantage in producing apples. Now, question eight should be super easy. We know that therefore the United States must have a comparative advantage in producing oranges because it's impossible for one country to have a comparative advantage in both goods. However, I can also just go up here and compare their opportunity costs, and I can see that one third is less than two, so of course, this must be true, that they have a comparative advantage in oranges, but again, I don't have to prove it. As soon as I know that one country has a comparative 
advantage and one good, I know that it must mathematically be true that the other country has the comparative advantage in production of the other good. That will always be the case. So let me put all of the answers on the screen so you can take a look at them and see how you did. If you found this video helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, of course. Let us know what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next. Thank you.